Hello and welcome. Yeah, you're here because you're having alert box issues. Loads of people use alert box from Streamlabs Online and most people that use it tend to use it with Streamlabs OBS and the two do tend to integrate pretty well when you use both. People mainly have issues when they're using it on third party platforms. To be honest, Streamlabs OBS has got its pros and its cons. I've used both OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. I mainly use OBS Studio because of the plugins, but I've used Streamlabs OBS and found it overall to be pretty good. But there are so many issues that can go wrong with alert box but i get so many questions on the video that i created about setting up alert box on streamlabs obs or even on a third party streaming software like obs studio so i was getting so many questions you can see them all here like so many questions from people i decided that it was best to do like a diagnosing alert box issues video um, it's weird because i also get like these comments as well which obviously show it's going well it does work for some people i've been using it for a while but i've also experienced issues with it too so i definitely feel your frustration with alert box thing is it's one of the most reliable and best tools for having alerts for things that are happening on your stream and it's also one of the widest used and best supported so Really, it's a pretty safe bet using alert box in general, but it definitely comes with its bugs. So in this video, it's going to be a fairly long video about how to diagnose the most common issues. And the great thing is to save you time, I'm going to organize those in what I feel from my own experience is the most common issues through to the least common issues. And that just helps you basically start with the most common issues that are likely to be happening and then you'll exhaust the list and if you get to the bottom of the list and there's still issues after watching this video man i'm really struggling you need to reach out to streamlabs at that point sorry <laughs> it's not my software okay it's not it's ultimately it's not my software so so i machine day and i help people to level up their content if you enjoy this if you do find it useful please hit the like button feel free to subscribe to me any questions in general about streaming feel free to join me in my discord link in the description also you can jump on my twitch stream at twitch.tv Four slash machine Dana. We'll get into this now. Let's go. Jeez, I'm really not digging the light that's emitting from my main screen here. It's giving me like a green hue. I can assure you I'm not unwell. This green hue is purely from the Streamlabs thing. So I'm going to be getting into quite a lot of detail here. I'll start with some pretty simple stuff and it gets fairly complicated. And I'll also add links in the description for most, if not all, of the things that I mentioned in this video. For instance, articles that I refer to or videos or even Streamlabs Discord group. The most common issue by far that I see is that people need to go into recent events tab or you can search for recent events this is the recent events tab i don't know why streamlabs have not ported the same settings within the alert box section it seems dumb to me that they would split that off because it is specifically relating to alert box but they don't have it in the alert box section so hence why they get loads of questions about it you can pause you can skip you can mute your alerts with this little widget here she's a online widget at streamlabs.com and it relates to your alerts within the stream and links to alert box it does also a link to other things as well like chat box and things we'll keep it simple for now so just make sure that this isn't paused make sure that it's not muted try skipping alerts as well because sometimes it can choke you can also click on this event filters thing here and specifically choose which alerts you want to see the next thing is the live actions within this section here again it's within the recent events section there's an area where you can set the alerts master volume just check that this volume is not set to zero and also with tts if you've got text to speech enabled through your alert box make sure that this also isn't set to zero i found personally the biggest issues i've had is getting the alerts volume right and it sometimes can just randomly be inconsistently loud or quiet or muted so this area here is just an again it should be in the alert box area but it, it just isn't it's weird if all else fails with these things in specific you can reload the widgets here as well so it's a really easy way you can just reload the widgets and that might just reset the cache a little bit on the widgets that you've already got applied onto your broadcast software. And even if that's not Streamlabs OBS that you're using, you've applied it as a browser source, which we'll get into a little bit more detail in a second. There's a few areas you can do within recent events. Now we get into alert box itself. We want to just be checking that all of these sections here, that the actual events that you want to be alerted for are ticked. Clearly, if they're all unticked, 
you ain't getting alerts for them. And obviously here we can test those alerts by opening up Streamlabs OBS here and clicking on those tests. Now, one quick, very quick tip here, particularly if you're hearing like duplicate audio or you want like a clean test. If you right click your tab and mute the site here like that by pressing this button, it will mute the website and you will not hear any audio test through the website. You will only hear it through Streamlabs OBS. And that way you can test the sound in a more clear way. And on this, you also want to make sure that the alert box setting on the mixer, bear in mind here, you can right click and unhide all here in case you can't see all of the devices on the, on the mixer. Alert box, because it emits sound, will always have a mixer sound setting. You can go into the settings for this and look at the properties and it'll open up the properties in general for alert box in this case. You can also control the master volume of this within Streamlabs OBS. So even if the volume is high or low natively from the settings online, you can control to a higher degree the settings within Streamlabs OBS here. So you want to make sure in particular that this isn't muted, but also that the volume is to a level that you want when you're doing your testing. Finally as well, you also want to make sure that alert box is actually visible. I've made this mistake a few times because I make YouTube videos. I don't want my alerts to interrupt my YouTube videos. So for me, I sometimes will turn off alert box. So you need to make sure it's visible. If it's not visible, you ain't going to see it regardless of what happens. So there's some really, really rudimental things to check before you even get into them more complicated stuff and obviously you want to check within the actual specific game scene as well for example if you're doing nesting you want to make sure that the nested scene that it's within is also visible for me i've nested it within my live scene base assets and this is obviously visible i would know if it wasn't visible because it'd be a black screen like that next we're getting into some of the more kind of uncommon things but stuff you definitely can check before needing to reach out to people you want to make sure that you're on the most recent version of streamlabs obs the most recent version is located in the top left hand corner here. You can always download the most recent version by visiting this really horribly green screen here on streamlabs.com and clicking the download button. So that is also th something you can do. You can also try within settings here within Streamlabs OBS, if you're on Streamlabs OBS that is, to log out of Streamlabs OBS itself and log back into Streamlabs OBS. However, before you do that, make sure that you're logging in in the first place with Streamlabs OBS and setting up your alert box with an account that actually links to the platform that you're streaming on. So if you're streaming on Twitch, log in with your Twitch account and that will link Twitch to Streamlabs OBS. That's quite a common issue because a lot of people will not link them in the right way like that. So therefore, if you're streaming on YouTube, log into Streamlabs OBS in your YouTube account and configure the alert box from there. So one thing you can also try doing here is logging out of Streamlabs OBS and logging back in, obviously with the correct credentials. While we're on this, if you do decide to upgrade to Streamlabs Prime. Make sure you use my affiliate link, which I'll link below. A, because I get money, and that's obviously the main reason you would use that link, because I get money. But also, you save money too. So, you know, give us both money. So, assuming you've got the correct software version, you've tried the pausing and the muting and all the sound issues that we've already been through, got the, the latest software, you've logged in with the right credentials, you're using alert box and all that kind of stuff, and all of the correct alert box things are checked like this, we need to be checking some of these settings as well. So, unlimited alert moderation delay. You want to make sure that this is unchecked. If that's clicked as enabled, there will be a sense of recent events, and that means that in the recent events tab, there'll be an area to moderate. You want to make sure this is disabled by default if this is enabled, it will literally disable all alerts because it's waiting for someone to moderate them. You also just want to check that the alerts that have been muted or not come through, if they've got profanity within them, especially if it's like standard bad word list profanity, they will have automatically been moderated out, even if you've got it disabled here on the unlimited alert moderation delay. I've had quite a few comments to say that people cannot see the follows section. I don't know why. The followed settings are literally here. I, I, if you're not seeing that, I have no idea why. So I'm sorry. Uh, that's definitely one for Streamlabs to contact them about. But, you, but on that, you can specifically enable or disable follow alerts on a case-by-case -case basis. For example, by going into the specific event follows on follow alerts, clicking enable or disable it. Set to disabled, follow alerts will not show up. I mean... The, the the clues in the description. Here's where you would find the browser source URL. You do not need to add the browser source URL if you're a Streamlabs OBS user. And that's because you can go into Streamlabs OBS, you can add a new source and you can simply select alert box because it's pre-integrated and all the settings can be done within Streamlabs OBS. But I ain't getting into too much detail about that because I've done a video about setting up alert box, which I will also link in the description below. But even though it's integrated, you can still use it as a browser source if you do not
not want to use the integrated widget version. To do that, you would copy the widget URL and instead of adding a source from here, the widgets, you would simply add it as a browser source here. So if I add this as a, a browser source here, I'll add a new one. You can name it, add the source, and we just want to make sure that we're happy with these settings here as well. You can try testing with this setting here, refreshing browser source when scene becomes active. That's just something that might help. If you've installed alert box themes, which are really, really good, by the way, they kind of apply nice themes over the alert box rather than the standard ones. Many people use images that they upload or sounds that they upload themselves, but some people will have like a theme that matches the overlay theme that you've got on your stream, which looks really good. Sometimes that can make some conflicts. If the provider of those overlays or the theme alert box has not done their job well enough, perhaps if there's been some sort of issue with the installation of that theme, that can be the issue. So you can try just disabling the theme here or pressing reset code before you do further testing just to rule out whether or not it's the theme that's causing the issue or it's something else. I would probably try doing that as one of the last resorts because you don't want to be messing around with the theming code if you can help it. But really we're getting to the point where actually you've tried so many different things there's really not much left to try. To manage your alert box themes you can click on manage themes here. In this section you're able to activate certain themes and it shows also the theme that's currently active. You want to just check that the alert duration is actually long enough. You do that by clicking on the specific event that you're looking at and looking at the alert duration. Clearly, if the alert duration is set to like zero or one second, this could be an issue for you if you think that you've got a 10 second clip, but only the settings are allowing it to be played for zero or one second. It's Unlikely that you'll have done that, but just make sure that the alert duration matches the clip that you're adding. I've had quite a lot of questions from people that are saying that the image file or the audio file is not working for them. It's just not allowing you to upload it. Unfortunately, I think this is just a weird bug with Streamlabs. Some files, it just seems to not like. And in those instances, I've either had to try a completely fresh file or a different file format or literally just use a completely different file altogether and scrap the idea that I had for that specific alert. I don't know why it does it. I feel like it's probably something to do with the encoding of the file conflicting within the authorizations within the alert box settings. But now we're getting into some really, really deep alert box issues there. And that's probably not for this video. My recommendation if you're getting that error, unfortunately, is either contact Streamlabs OBS or just use a completely different image or sound file. 99% of the time, the image files and the sound files do work. Firewalls can also conflict specifically with the alert box as well. Just to check the firewall just make sure you type in firewall into windows do a little search for this you can click on allow an app through the firewall and from here you just want to check that streamlabs obs or your streaming software is allowed through the firewall here it's unlikely that this is the cause but you might just want to check anyway. But the final thing is a real last resort is that you can obviously can re-add the alert box widgets as I sort of mentioned earlier. But there is an area where if you type in API, the API settings, you can see what's connected in here and go on to the API tokens here. Your API access tokens allows you to refresh the existing API access tokens that are contained within browser source URLs that we use to integrate with browser sources like alert box. By clicking refresh here, it will add a new link into your browser sources and you will literally need to replace any browser sources that you've added through Streamlabs OBS. For instance, any widgets that you've applied. Some other things just to check as well, within your account settings in Twitch and the same applies to YouTube as well and Facebook and so on, there is a connections tab here. You just want to make sure that there is a connection between Streamlabs and your Twitch account. Now, it's not obvious here. You would expect it to probably be up here somewhere, but it is down here. So there's a connection to OBS Studio, but I've also got a connection to Streamlabs as well here. If all else fails, I'm going to link an article here for more things you can do to troubleshoot. It does cover some of the things that I've covered here, but it's worthwhile looking at as well. There's also another video. Again, there's a lot of crossover with this video, but it's a Streamlabs official video. That you can check out in the link in the description below. Or of course, follow the link in the description below to contact Streamlabs through their Discord group if you're still having trouble after trying out all of these things. I think I've covered probably 99.5% of all the issues that people are likely to have here. Set up alert box notifications on your stream. I mean, as you can see, I do respond to virtually every single message and every question that I do get asked on the comments because, you know, 
that's a good thing. But most of these responses now are just going to be, check out this video. So hopefully you guys have found this useful. I really, really hope you've been able to get to the bottom of the issues that you've been having with Alertbox. I just want to say that it can be buggy. And the reason why it's buggy is because it's as good as it is. It integrates into so many different areas and it works so well when it is working that so many things can go wrong. But there's so many different variables and that's why there are so many issues that can happen. If you found this useful, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Take care.